joined by Andy Mock. He's a senior research fellow at the Center for China and Globalization in Beijing. Good to have you on the program with us. Now, how challenging is it for local businesses to compete with the flood of cheap Chinese products? Well, thank you for having me. Uh, I think the answer, unfortunately, is that it is very, very difficult. But it's important to point out here that Chinese imports, uh, particularly in the textile sector, are not just cheap, but in many instances, uh, fashionably designed and high quality. So I think this makes it very, very difficult um, for the textile industry in Indonesia, other parts of the world, uh, to really have an effective response. And this is not so much a China issue as these sectors are uh, victims of progress in that if we look back, say, to the uh, the days of the Industrial Revolution in Great Britain, uh, many uh, textile workers that made their textiles by hand uh, suffered economic losses because of advances in technology, primarily steam power. And I think this is exactly the same dynamic that we're seeing here in that China uh, is not just cheaper because it's cheaper, but in fact, uh, more advanced technology uh, economies of scale uh, that make it uh, very difficult, I think, for traditional industries anywhere in the world to compete. Right. And you mentioned this is not just a China issue. What strategies can governments uh, help implement for these industries, for local industries so to great. tackle the competition? No, that's a great question. And I think um, the best long term solution is to mitigate the cost of change. Because when we look at it from a macro uh, economic perspective, think about uh, how the world is so much better with steam power, electric power, digital technologies. This also was very disruptive. Many people lost their jobs, sometimes permanently, if they could not uh, adapt to the new realities. So I think the role of government here is to mitigate these changes um, to the degree that is possible and uh, really be proactive versus trying to stop or slow down these changes, uh, but to embrace them because they do impose cost on certain sectors of society. But generally speaking, they bring far more benefit to the larger uh, economy and to, the con to, the con to a country overall. Right, and China is known for responding aggressively to trade measures. How likely is it that Ch uh, Beijing will retaliate? Well, I think we have to see, and I think in this regard, China is no different from any other country that it, of course, will look after its own economic interests. So to the degree that I think China uh, sees any response as unfair or uh, overly uh, protectionist, um, I'm sure there will be some sort of response. And if history is any guide, what we see, though, is that China uh, has a very rational, well-calibrated response to any uh, sort of changes in the international environment uh, that it feels it needs to take action on to protect uh, its own national interest. All right, Andy, we'll have to leave it there. Andy Mock, Senior Research Fellow at the Center for China and Globalization.